Hey guys, let's get a start. Today, we are going to continue our discussion about marketing research. Those are the learning objectives for the Korea lecture and today's lecture. In the last lecture, I introduced the three ways to collect information about consumers, namely internal database, competitive marketing intelligence, and marketing research. In today's lecture, we will finish up our discussion about the observational methods first. Then we will discuss how to use social media and big data to collect consumer insights. In the last lecture, we discussed how to use the observational method in new product develop development. In the so-called ethnographic research, research and the development people observe how people use their products and note the difficulty that consumers are facing when using their products. Then they improve their product designs based on their observations. Of course, observational method can be used in other marketing related contexts as well. Here is another marketing example that shows the importance of the observational method. Likely, we all have had the experience of visiting a furniture store. You probably have noticed that there are two major layouts in furniture stores. The first one is that the furniture is displayed by brand. For example, the chair, the table, cabinet made by the same brand are put together, as shown in the photograph on the right, on the left. The second layout is that furniture is displayed by category. So dining sites made by different brands are arranged together, as shown in the photograph on the right. Do you know why there are such different layouts? Let us pause here for two seconds, uh, two minutes, so that you can discuss with your classmates. The reason behind such a difference in store layout is very different. If you want to know why, we can discuss it uh, together sometime in the next lecture. But here, in this lecture, I would like you to use example to reiterate the importance of observation. Obviously, our observation can help us improve the operation of our business. Here, I would like to show you a video to give you some ideas about how retailers use the observational method to increase the sales. Please click the photo on this slide to see the video. On this slide, you can see a summary of potential problems of the observational method. First, participants in a study may change their behavior in some ways due to their awareness that they are being observed. Because of this, the observational data may be contaminated uh, to a certain degree. Second, if the behavior, if behavior manager is interested in occurs very infrequently, then the observational method is very time-consuming to use. Third, attitude, motivation, and private behavior are hard to observe. Then, when using observational method, market managers only report the behavior it serves, so they may not know the underlying motivation of the behavior. Sometimes people may demonstrate the same behavior, although the motivation behind the behavior could be totally different. Here are some tips of using the observational method. First, if possible, use this guy's observations. That is, do not let people know that they are being observed. Second, go to the field multiple times to observe or create situations to make infrequent behavior to emerge.
compared to other marketing research method, observational method has it is own strengths and weakness. Here is a summary of it is strength. This slide summarizes the major weakness of the observational method. The other market research method I would like to discuss in this class is social media and big data. What is social media? There are many different definitions, but all deal with the sharing of information to achieve social interaction. Because of social media, the communication among consumers shifts from one to many model to a many to many model. Social media are web-based platforms and they can be used to inform, educate and engage customers. On this slide, you can see the logos of the most commonly used social media platforms, including YouTube, uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook. Notably, Google, the search engine, is also considered as a uh, social media. Social media can help managers to collect information about consumers in many different ways. Here, I would like to discuss two applications of social media in marketing research, namely data collection and problem resolution. Social media are a natural source of secondary data and qualitative research. Nowadays, consumers are likely to post their comments about a brand or product online. Those comments are usually publicly available so that the focal firm can easily find the information and then infer consumers' attitude and actions towards their brands or products. Here comes an example. A consumer posted her comments on a HP product. From this comment, we can see this consumer is very unhappy. Such information is certainly valuable for HP because it tells the company whether it is customers are satisfied or not. Sometimes social media can provide the right solution to a problem. Please take a look at the scenario on this screen and think about if you were an officer at CDC in the United States, what would you do to figure out where the virus already was? Someone at the CDC is very smart in this case. They approach the Google and use search data to find the answer they are looking for. Their logic is if the virus already spread to an area, so more people in that area will get sick because of this virus. Then they are likely to use the keywords such as flu, fever, cure, drugs as the keywords to search information online. Accordingly, in those areas, the search of using those keywords should increase significantly. So by just looking at whether the search for a certain area has increased recently, CDC can find where the virus already was. Alex is an online marketing analytics uh, platform run by Amazon. It attracts the online traffic to a different website. So on this platform, if you type in the address of a website, Alex will tell you the demographic information of visitors to that website. On this screen, you can see the demographic information of visitors who browse the homepage of Samsung on the top, whereas a calling information of visitors who browse the homepage of, of Apple can be seen at the bottom. Such information is tremendously useful for those two companies. Now let's take a look at the concept big data. It has been a hot topic recently. 
In, in marketing, big data refers to a huge and a complex data set generated by today's sophisticated information generation, collection, storage, and analysis technologies. Here, I would like to remind you from the marketing perspective, big data is a good thing not because it is big, but because it is right. In other words, marketing care more about whether the data are right to use than whether the data are big or not. In my perspective, big data means two things to marketers. First, marketers can analyze data collected like from multiple sources. Second, marketers can collect and analyze the data that used to be impossible to collect. This is a famous marketing example to show the usage of big data. Imagine you were a manager at Target. How would you find whether a female customer is pregnant or not? The information about whether a female customer is pregnant or not is valuable to retailers because once they know, they may decide to send coupons of products such as formula, infant clothes, infant toys to the customer. The question is, how could you know that? If a woman is pregnant, she may care more about her diet. For example, she may eat more vegetables and drink more milk. She may browse infant products online. She may also start buying menstrual packs that uh, purchase more vitamin supplies. A retailer has a very good chance to infer whether a woman is pregnant correctly if all the above information can be assembled together. So to find an answer to the question like the one presented on the previous slide, marketers can pull on data such as consumers' purchase history, credit card use, email click through, and a website visit. There are age, education, and marital status, uh, important life events such as um, when they last moved, wedding, and graduation. Walmart even takes use of weather forecast data. Once they know a hurricane will hit an area, they will prepare more of bottled water, flashlights, or other stuff for consumers to purchase before the hurricane comes. Big data also means marketers can collect new data that used to be impossible or hard to collect. New data includes Google search, uh, search data, online traffic data, mobile-based location data, eye tracking data, and uh, interactive mirror data. You can click the links on this slide to look at what eye tracking data and interactive mirror data look like. Based on our understanding of big data, so here I would like to ask you guys a question. So imagine you are market manager. How could you find your customers are about to move before they actually do so? Do you have any idea? We can discuss this in the next lectures.